Overall, we found like if you look at the physiological indicators after transportation, you're going to find higher creatine kinase, higher blood lactate of these animals, of course, high skin temperature and blood cortisol. As you can see, all of those indicators are, they mean really bad stuff for your pigs if you get those indicators, right? So it means that it doesn't matter wherever in the world you are, if you have bad microclimate conditions, your, your animals are going to suffer, you're going to lose in meat quality, and of course, the welfare of the, of the animals. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me in our illustrious podcast studios for this week's edition is Dr. Rick Hernandez. Dr. Hernandez is currently a PhD candidate at Purdue University. Rick, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's a pleasure to have you on here. Um, if you would, why don't we start with a brief introduction for the audience? Thank you so much for the invitation. And as you mentioned, I'm a veterinarian from Colombia. I have a master's degree in veterinary sciences, especially on animal welfare and behavior, where I work with pigs on farm, transport, and on the pre-slaughter chain. And I'm a PhD candidate at Purdue University, where I study the use of genomics, physiology, and behavioral approaches to improve swine welfare. Very good. Rick, you mentioned uh, pre-slaughter, and uh, we are going to get as, as close to the slaughter as we, as we could possibly be with our discussion today, because we're going to talk about uh, pig transport. Um, and obviously, we transport pigs at different times, but they're always stressful situations. And for a producer and for a veterinarian, they're high-risk situations. Um, you know, you can have biosecurity risks. But today, we're going to focus a little bit more about just the transportation process uh, and the impact of environment and specifically the micro environment of the pig, the microclimate of the pig during uh, the transportation process. Um, transport's a bit of a black box, Rick. You know, most of us, we put a pig on a trailer or we receive a pig off a trailer. But then while the pig's on the trailer, we're not truck drivers. We don't exactly know what's going on. How did you get um, kind of interested in this? How did you come across this as a, a topic of study? And talk to us a little bit about what goes on in that black box, right? What are, what are some of the risks that pigs have related to micro and climate while they're in the transportation process? Currently, I'm working on transportation on Cole's house and on piglets, specifically selected for heat stress tolerance, right? So while I was doing those projects, I figured out like, I had the same intuition, like, okay, what is going on during this transport process? I mean, we know it's important. We have evidence that says that microclimate is bad, that heat stress is bad for the pigs. We have uh, evidence or prevalence of dead on arrival pigs, non-ambulatory pigs, or injured, fat, fatigued. So I, I wanted to explore a little bit more about the dynamics of that microclimate, what was going on there. So. My, my idea was just to do a meta-analysis and then with that discover how in the world uh, or how consistent are, are these effects of microclimate around the world, right? So overall, we found like if you look at the physiological indicators after transportation, you're going to find higher creatine kinase, higher blood lactate of these animals, of course, high skin temperature and blood cortisol. As you can see, all of those indicators are, they mean really bad stuff for your pigs if you get those indicators, right? So it means that it doesn't matter wherever in the world you are, if you have bad microclimate conditions, your, your animals are gonna suffer, you're gonna lose in meat quality, and of course, the welfare of the, of the animals. So when I was, uh, gathering the data and evaluating all the studies available, uh, we identify like some main problems that arise when controlling uh, microclimate during transport. So first, microclimate conditions, they differ significantly from the environment. So we can say that ambient temperature is relatively correlated to trailer temperature, but for relative humidity, that is not the case. 
So the trailer design impacts a lot how much humidity is within the trailer. And then if you have high humidity, you're going to reduce the capacity of the pig to just dissipate heat through panting or respiratory rate. We also uh, identify that microclimate is considered mainly a static measure. So you have like a point estimate of what, was, what were the conditions of temperature or relative humidity during the transport, but that lacks the detail to capture what is going on during transport. So you can have segments of high peaks of temperature and relative humidity, for instance, during a stopover, I don't know, a traffic jam or something like that. And then in just five minutes, you can have like a really increasing temperature that is going to affect the welfare of your animals, right? Because of the nature of the studies that we evaluated, we couldn't compare behavioral um, outcomes, but there were reports of a lot of behavioral outcomes, an increase of pigs lying, for instance, and other type of behavioral coping mechanisms, as sitting and so on during transportation. So the, the main point is that the average of the microclimate during transport does not give us like an accurate reading of what's happening during transport. So that is really important and we need to consider that when evaluating it. Additionally, we have like a lack of standardized indicators for microclimate. So that doesn't allow us to compare studies more effectively because if they have different scales, so we cannot compare the, the outcomes. And also it gives us like a, in my opinion, a bigger problem. And is that we cannot find like a regulatory threshold. I cannot tell the producer like, this is the threshold that you need to avoid at all costs because it depends what indicator you use, in which conditions you are measuring. So we need to find like a compromise indicator that give us enough information. An enthalpy or enthalpy comfort index is one potential candidate. And additionally, uh, we also identify that not all compartments during transportation are the same. So although environmental conditions are similar, pigs are experiencing a different microclimate during transport. So for instance, um, uh, the animals that are in the first floor and following the cabin, they will have worse microclimate because they are the first ones to get loading in. They are the worst ventilated compartments in all the, the trailer and they have to wait more even for loading and unloading. So. The, the idea is that we need to control those very specific problematic microclimatic compartments, if I can say it in some way, uh, to avoid losses and to avoid all these welfare concerns that we are having. Rick, you mentioned um, that we really don't have a good standardized way to measure the microclimate. And then you referenced uh, uh, kind of an index that we might use. Could you talk a little bit more about what practical measurements are out there? Because um, ultimately, for us to improve things, we're going to have to give producers and truck drivers very specific advice of what to measure and then what's the range of acceptable and unacceptable. So you've spent a lot of time thinking about this. What is a practical measurement or, or set of measurements? measures that could be used to evaluate the microclimate and its appropriateness for delivering the pigs looking just as good as they were when they got on the trailer. Yeah, my recommendation, and this is just my uh, personal opinion, is just that you need to measure dry bulb temperature, relative humidity, and dew point. Because with those three, you can derive any indicator that you want, right? So, and then you can compare with other studies. In fact, that was the procedure that I did for the meta-analysis. I only was able to choose those studies that reported these measures, and then I converted everything into enthalpy, like a unified indicator to be able to compare all of them. So enthalpy is like a more robust indicator. It has problems of, as well, because you will have to assume that um, you are transporting on the at the sea level. So if you're driving in Denver, you, you're not going to have to, I mean, you have to adjust your equation and your formula, right? But it's like a very robust and strong indicator that we can use to be able to identify the amount of thermal energy that is within the trailer in each given time. 
I wouldn't recommend using THI that much because there is like a relationship between temperature and relative humidity. As you have more temperature, you decrease relative humidity because you increase the capacity of the air to hold water. So you're going to have these weird relationships that you need to account if you want to make like a threshold. So for my point of view, if you have the three main ones, temperature, uh, relative humidity, and dew point, you can calculate anything. And then you can make your own thresholds if you need to. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Say a producer uh, buys what you're selling, they measure those things, the dew point, the humidity, the temperature, and then they come to you and say, I don't like these numbers, my numbers aren't good. What can they do about it, Rick? What are, what are some practical things they can do to improve the microclimate during transport? The main, the main option is ventilation, right? So we need to be able to improve ventilation, especially on those compartments that are more problematic, right? In different, in different parts of Latin America and more tropical countries, you're going to see that um, there are more like wetting practices where you just wet the entire animal before loading. Here we have a more subtle approach of misting before transporting animals. Uh, this may represent a, a problem because you, you increase the capacity of the animal in that initial state to evapora evaporative um, heat loss, but you may increase relative humidity inside the trailer. So you, you're going to have a trade-off of, of, of a new problem, right? So ventilation is key. If you are able to fix somehow the ventilation pattern of at least those compartments in the low part in the first floor, uh, you're going to increase welfare of animals a lot. Very good. What about uh, future, Nick? What do you see out there as potential future solutions that could help us to reduce the challenges posed by microclimate? The main thing is continuous monitoring systems during transport. I mean, I know that if we talked about this, I don't know, like 10 years ago, it would be like, oh, no, it's impossible. But now we have the technology to do this. And it is really not difficult. You can have eye buttons, you can have hygrometers, you can have any type of devices that can be like, you don't even need a cable anymore. <laughs> you can be Wi-Fi connected, Bluetooth connected with the um, panel to the driver so he knows what is going on in the trailer and he can take corrective actions, right? So he can do that. Also that we could develop like an alarm system for drivers so they know when certain microclimate conditions are rich, they have to do something. And lastly, and this is an area that I'm uh, starting to work on, is some predictive risk models. We have a new pig, which is, which is more efficient, more productive, but also produces more heat, right? We can calculate that. And we can calculate the conditions of microclimate that the animals are exposed to. So we can create predictive risk models that are accurate, that let us know uh, what conditions are the pigs going to be exposed to. So the, the core idea is that if we give the pigs a better transportation environment, we will make sure that all the hard work done at the farms with the nutrition, the management, the sanitary measurements, uh, measures is preserved at the end of the process. It's an old school problem, but I love that you're taking a new school approach of thinking about it, measuring it, and ultimately thinking outside the box on how we can monitor those microclimates and, and make them better. Really appreciate you doing the work, Rick, and thanks so much for coming on the podcast and sharing it with the audience. Thank you so much for having me here. Oh, our pleasure, Rick. Um, and we got to thank the audience. Um, to those of you listening, thank you so much for being a part of this. Uh, we really appreciate uh, your contributions. We ask one more contribution. Like and subscribe to the podcast if you would. That helps the algorithm to, to drive this good information out to more and more producers, veterinarians, and allied industry. For Dr. Rick Hernandez, my name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. It's been a pleasure to, to host you here for the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, and we certainly hope you have a great rest of your day.